Hello everyone. What do you think of my mask? Now, I'll admit this mask that I'm holding right near doesn't use the actual masking features in Moho. This is just a, a simple object with a pair of holes in it that uh, kind of simulate a mask that I can put over my face. But recently I discovered a couple of shapes and objects and animations that really needed some extra edge to them to, to give them a little more life. And I'd like to share those with you and show you how masking techniques really improve those and show you how you can actually utilize those masking techniques in some nice ways that you can remember how each feature works. All right, so let's get started with an animation effect that I recently used in one of my uh, videos just last week. And I've got this named the file blast.moho and I've got the object itself named dotted beam, but let's be honest with ourselves, this is Kirby Crackle. So Jack Kirby used to do this, especially in his outer space scenes where he'd have a, a beam of color energy and then he'd outline it with black dots to kind of give it a jagged outer edge very quickly. And so as you can see, I've got the, the central raw beam, which is a, um, a, a gradient between red and yellow. Looks really good. I have a set of black dots, smaller black dots in the interior, which you can see are, uh, are animated. And I have these in sets of five, and when a, a dot gets all the way to the outer edge, I've migrated back to the front, and I keep doing that until that set of five goes all the way around once. And then you have these larger dots, which kind of encapsulate the beam in a dark outer edge to kind of give it an interior jagged light edge. And then, lastly, you have these clear dots on the outer edge, which are a mask. And these do the same thing. They cycle all the way around, and they give the outer black edge an additional jagged edge and it actually animates really well I I was really happy with the way this came out but this is an example of you know a very simple linear animation that can give a lot of life to an energy effect all right so let's get into something new though and I've, I've migrated my picture up here because I, I realize y'all can't see the layers if my picture is down here in this corner so I've got a red flame and a yellow flame and honestly, the, these interior layers that are being masked are just slightly modified triangles, uh, very simple shapes. But by using the mask effect on the exterior with these circular dots, it takes a bite out of it. And when you put this in motion, and these will cycle around repeatedly, uh, that, that bite kind of gives them a wave. And that's that wave that I was going for in order to create something that looks like a fire. Now this is far from a perfect fire. This is definitely not a cell animated fire, but I could embed this in some logs to make a fireplace, or I could uh, plop this in a background, give it a little bit of blur, and it would, it would definitely pass for a fire in a basic online animation. So I'm pretty pleased with this. I'm gonna use this in something coming for, in something, you know, looking ahead. All right, so the basic rules of masking is, number one, it must be part of a nested layer. And as you can see over here in the layer panel, I've already got a nested layer bone layer. And if you're in Moho debut like I am, your only option is a bone layer. If you're in Pro, you have the option for a group layer. And layers mask should be above the mask. And in fact, Moho will do this for us. So I'm gonna open up the nested layer and I'm gonna switch this to hide all. And as you can see, it's automatically made the bottommost layer the mask. It's got this little plus sign next to it indicating that this is an add to mask effect. And the two above it have kind of this little half moon uh, illustration placed next to the vector symbol to indicate that those are being masked off. And as you can see here, these two painted spaces are now restricted to the area placed, area defined by the bottommost mask layer. So pretty simple. Um, that's how you get started with masks, but let me show you more specific examples because, I mean, looking in here under masking, there's like two options for the group mask and then there's a ton of other options for the layer masking of individual layers. So let's move on to a different example. Okay, so for our first example, hide all when used with an add to layer acts like a canvas. So I've defined my hide all example nested layer here with the bone. Um, I have my paint layer, which is the topmost layer, which is the layer that's going to be affected by the mask. And then on the bottom here, I've got canvas mask, which is kind of the sample of the mask. And then on outside of the nested layer, I have the easel, which I'm going to use to provide an example of something later on. 
So let's go in here to masking and we're going to turn on hide all, hit OK. And we can tell that canvas mask is now an add to layer because it has a plus sign. If it was a subtract from layer, it would have a minus sign. So let's go to the paint layer and let's just throw out some color here, color circles here. Let's start with a red one. And as you can see, every single shape that I draw is being restricted to the canvas. Let's do two more. Let's go for a purple here. And how about a yellow then next? A little small yellow one in the middle. And if I do a render of this, you can see that those colors are once again restricted to the mask. Let's look at some options for that mask. Uh, if you want to turn off exclude strokes, what this will do is it will cause the strokes to be a component of the mask. So if you zoom in on here, you can see that the outer edge of the circle um, overlaps and the blue goes all the way to the outer edge and excludes the outer line of the mask. Let's look at one more thing. Go to masking. We'll switch to add to mask, but keep invisible. And what that does is, as you can see, the easel has now become visible because the mask itself is invisible. And this is potentially very helpful depending on what kind of model you're trying to make with this sort of thing. But that's an example of how hide all and use with add to can create an effect like this. All right, so next up we have the reveal all option, and that's going to take a bite out of the image that you use, especially when you use it with subtract. So let's go into our nested layer here, go to masking, and choose reveal all, hit OK. And as you can see, by default, uh, Moho has defined the mask as a hide all or a uh, subtraction mask. It's got a little minus sign next to the shape here and the image is being masked. It's got the little half moon again. And this is what I used in order to create the fire effect of the Kirby crackle effect. I had some circles that just took a bite out of a larger image. So pretty simple. Funny thing is, let's go in here and try this with some other options. So let's change this to add to mask and hit apply. And, and as you can see, Basically, the shape has gone right back to looking exactly the way it's saying because you've chosen reveal all, so essentially you are revealing all. Um, if we choose add to mask but keep invisible, the, the mask disappears, but the regular image stays the same. We go back to subtract, and it goes back to this. And you can make some surprisingly complex shape shapes by taking um, different shaped bites out of, of objects like this. So this is how a reveal all style mask would work. All right, so lastly, you may have noticed that under the masking tab, you also have the option to clear the mask and add this layer to it, or clear the mask and then add this layer invisibly to it. Clearing masks kind of works from the top down. So this is mask number one, and this is being used on a nest that is set for hide all as you can see, because uh, the image, which is a larger oval here, that is being restricted by these two circles here. So let's change this to clear the mask and add this layer to it for the first mask. And we click OK. And you can see it's cleared the mask that is below it, which is mask number two, defined by this kind of pinkish circle. So let's go back to add to mask. And let's try that on mask two and see if it does something different. And as you can see, nothing happens because clearing masks work from the top down. Go back to add to mask. And let's add this one invisibly this time. And what's going to happen is the mask layer itself disappears, but the area it's defined by it that is above it still shows up, that purple layer. But once again, because the mask has been cleared, all the masks below this one have disappeared. Now, this might sound kind of weird, but when you're using layered animated effects, especially since those are something you can enable in a nested layer, uh, this could actually be something that comes up as you're constructing more and more complicated models. Anyway, that's all I had for you today. Um, you're getting a tutorial because my last, uh, my last video ended up running a little long and I had to make some corrections to it because I was just not happy with the way the Wizards model turned out. But thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. 
you know, happy modeling, happy animating. See you later, folks.